But to me, the most important thing is the connection, communication, relationship. And, that's, and the way you achieve that is by you understanding energy, the psychology of a dog, and the activities that they like to do. Welcome to the DPC. For those who uh, don't know this beautiful place, this is about dog psychology. It is a place where I like to teach people about the difference between dog training, which is something that we're being programmed to believe, programmed to think. Actually, I wanted to be the best dog trainer. When I came to America, it was my dream to become the best dog trainer in the world. Dog training is great, but what happens is most people skip energy, philosophy, and activities, which that allows you to achieve trust, respect, and love. So if you don't have trust, respect, and love, what you end up training is a dog that doesn't trust, a dog that does not respect, a dog that is not going to feel the pure, authentic love, right? So that's why I focus more on training humans so they can rehabilitate a dog. So is rehabilitation something that I was looking forward to achieve? Not really. That wasn't my goal in life. Actually, I believe more in prevention. But my goal is to teach people the difference between dog training and dog psychology. I'd rather, I'd rather, tra I'd rather do human training so they don't have to do rehabilitation. Dog training is, first of all, invented by human for the needs of a human, the wants of the humans, and what the human envision uh, a dog to do for them. Meaning, he's going to use the ears of a dog, the eyes of a dog, to to create a memory so the dog can perform and actually understand the human because this is something that the human wants. But to me, the most important thing is the connection, communication, relationship. And that's and the way you achieve that is by you understanding energy, the psychology of a dog and the activities that they like to do. Dog training utilizes sound, words, commands, uh, body gestures, a little bit of scent, Nah, there's not very big on much. They do a lot of <coughs> Okay, come on, come on, come on. They do a lot of that. So dogs are born nose, eyes, ears. But dog trainer, dog training is ears, eyes, nose. So it changes the way the dog learns about the world in his natural way. I like to teach people natural, simple, profound. So when you change the way a dog learns in his own natural way of being, you're actually altering his reality. So now he has to hear a sound to come out with a conclusion, to come out with a behavior, to come out with, with uh, an understanding. So it becomes very robotic. Now, I'm not saying dog training is bad. I'm just saying if you skip dog psychology and you move into dog training, that dog is going to develop antisocial behavior. That dog is not going to be able to connect with his own kind because humans have told them not to use nose, eyes, ears. Humans have told them to do ears, eyes, nose, which is how we learn. This is very human way of communicating. That's what dog training is, in, is invented by human for a human way of looking at the world, the human needs. The human is the one, the dog, to hear a sound and to give him a behavior, right? We're the one they name dogs. We're the one to say, sit, stay, come, heal all of those things, roll over, all of those things. A dog will be able to do that without a sound, right? Which that's exactly what I do. Now, dog psychology um, is the same as the psychology of a whale, the psychology of a gorilla, the psychology of an elephant. So it only makes sense that if you want to connect with an elephant, you're not gonna think training the elephant. You're going to train to think training the human so he can connect with the elephant and eventually that human can train the elephant, you see? So you train the human so the human can connect with the elephant so eventually that relationship allows them, allows the human to train the elephant, right? So that would be the right order. And most people would agree with me when it comes to an elephant. Dog psychology is the same. Dog psychology is understanding that before he's a dog, he's animal. Animal, species dog dog if somebody has a you know purebred breed and the last thing is name so animal species breed name in dog training they go backwards they do the name the breed of a dog 
They don't really practice dog psychology and they forget about instincts. They don't really practice animal understanding. So it's gonna create a big confusion. I have rehabilitated many dogs that are trained. Again, I'm not saying dog training is bad. That's, that was not what it was invented for, right? I'm saying that if we skip energy, psychology, activities, we're not going to build trust, respect, love. So if we don't have trust, respect, love, what we have is a, an animal that is trained, but you can't take them everywhere. You can't trust them around children. You can't trust them around dogs. You can't trust them around, around different species. You can't, you don't know how to help them, right? Because at the time that an animal is practicing fight, flight, avoidance, sound will not be able to influence calm surrender. And calm surrender is, is, a, is, it is the most important state of mind that a dog needs to do without a sound. So this is about you projecting your calm confidence. So the animal, in this case a dog, practice calm surrender. Think about it this way. Before a horse person is going to leash the horse, that person is calm confident. That's very little sound. So it's energy body language and the last thing is sound for a horse. And the reason is because horses are flight animals, they're very big, so they don't want the horse to get a little spook, right? So they, they practice silence, which it is the right thing to do because it keeps the horse calm. But when people does, hey, oh my God, sit, no, hey, it makes the brain excited or tense and that's related the reason why people do that is because most people have learned to talk to the ears of a dog because they want to train the dog again so you want you want to do it right you want to do dog psychology first and dog training first dog psychology means the human is well trained then the human can actually practice something unnatural that is called dog training a dog doesn't go to school to become trained the parents do everything so in the in the dog world the mom is the mom the teacher and the government so everything is done in our world our mom gives birth teaches some you know moral values and religion and politics and all of that stuff and then teachers we have to go outside to learn to develop our intellect and then outside that there is a government so our pillars is three different pillars and their world is their mom is everything and the mom practice connection communication relationship she doesn't train them she nurtures their natural way of being. If our energy, our psychology, and our activities are good, we're gonna have good energy. We're gonna have good self-love, self-value, self-knowledge. Then we can go to school and get trained, right? So training is not the first thing we have to achieve as human beings, it's the second thing after we achieve self-love, self-knowledge, and self-value. The same thing is for a dog. The dog needs to stay connected to the true self. The animal in him is the one that's gonna tell him about energy. The dog in him is the one that's gonna tell him how to relate to things, nose, eyes, ears. The breed in him is his skills. This is something completely separate from dog training. And then it's, the last thing is the name. Remember, the name is something we humans like to give to animals, to uh, parts of streets, to even boats, the Titanic. We name a, a boat. Well, where can you practice dog psychology and dog training? Every time you reintroduce yourself back with your dog, always ask your dog to calm surrender. This is what people call sit and stay. Before you put a leash on your dog and take him for a walk, make sure he practice calm surrender or sit and stay. Before you feed your dog, practice calm surrender or sit and stay. Before you ask him to come into the couch, calm surrender or sit and stay. That's gonna give you so much connection, just gonna allow you to to maintain the most beautiful gift we can have in a relationship with just trust, respect, and love. Those activities is something that we do every single day. Also, I forgot to tell you about food, right? Before the dog gets fed, ask him for calm surrender or sit and stay. Calm surrender is dog psychology. Dog training is sit and stay. Watch what happens. 
with that combination. Again, my goal in life is to help people understand that it's a natural way of being with animals, that it's a simple way of being with animals, and that it's a profound way of being with animals. That allows you to connect to spirit, that allows you to connect to instincts, that allows you to connect with heart before you connect to the mind. I understand that everybody wants to connect with the mind because this is what they want to train. But I want to teach you how to connect to the spirit of a dog, to the instincts of a dog, and to the heart of a dog before you think dog training. They're both very important, but dog psychology is number one. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and join me on my mission of better humans, better planet.